1974, General Motors unveiled a machine so massive, so ambitious, that it would hold the record as the world's largest haul truck for 25 years. But here's the twist. They only ever built one. This is the story of the Terex 3319 Titan, a one-of-a-kind Canadian giant that defied the odds and became a legend in the mining industry. The story begins decades earlier. In 1933, George Armington founded the Euclid Company in Ohio to build specialized hauling trucks. By the early 1950s, Euclid had grown so dominant that General Motors came knocking. In 1953, GM purchased the manufacturer for $20 million. Under the automaker's ownership, Euclid's market share exploded, soon controlling more than half of all off-highway dump truck sales in the United States. That dominance attracted unwanted attention. In 1959, the U.S. Department of Justice filed an antitrust lawsuit against GM, arguing the corporation was stifling competition. After years of legal battles, GM was forced to divest parts of its Euclid business. In 1968, White Motor Corporation purchased the American operations and the Euclid brand name. However, GM retained its plants in Canada and Scotland, along with crawler, scraper and loader product lines. In 1970, the corporation needed a new brand name for these remaining assets. They combined the Latin words terra, meaning earth, and rex, meaning king. The result was Terex, and it was under this banner that engineers would create something extraordinary. In the late 1960s, GM's engineers saw a fundamental shift coming. Mineral ore grades were declining worldwide, meaning mines would need to move significantly more material to extract the same amount of valuable minerals. The rising interest in tar sands and oil shale extraction also promised massive new markets for ultra-large haulers. GM believed the solution was simple. Build bigger trucks. If a mine could move 350 tons instead of 200, fewer trucks meant fewer operators, less fuel consumption per ton moved, and lower overall costs. This vision led to the 3319 project, the largest model in the Terex 33 series. While smaller models used conventional mechanical powertrains, the massive 3315 and the proposed 3319 required diesel-electric technology borrowed from locomotive engineering. What truly set the Titan apart was its powertrain. Under that enormous hood sat an electromotive division engine, the same type that hauled freight across America's railroads. This 16-cylinder, two-stroke diesel displaced 10,320 cubic inches, roughly 169 liters, more than 10 times what you'd find in the largest modern pickup truck engines. The turbocharged and intercooled power plant produced 3,300 horsepower and operated at remarkably low speeds, 300 revolutions per minute at idle and just 900 revolutions per minute under load. This locomotive heritage meant the engine was designed for continuous heavy-duty operation, running around the clock without complaint. But horsepower alone doesn't move 600 tons of truck and payload. The Titan used a diesel-electric drivetrain similar to, as said, locomotives. The engine powered an alternator generating alternating current electricity. It was then converted to direct current through rectifiers and sent to four General Motors traction motors, one at each of the eight rear wheels on the two rear axles. This system offered tremendous advantages. Electric motors produce maximum torque at zero revolutions per minute, perfect for getting a loaded truck moving from a standstill. There was no mechanical transmission to wear out, no clutches to burn up. The system was remarkably robust for demanding mine work. Moving the Titan required clever engineering. The truck featured a power-assisted all-wheel steering system decades ahead of its time. The front wheels could sweep through a 71-degree arc, but that alone wasn't enough for a vehicle this size. Engineers programmed the system so that when the front wheels moved beyond a certain point off-center, the eight rear wheels would also begin to turn up to a maximum of 10 degrees. This rear wheel steering dramatically reduced the turning circle and made the Titan far more maneuverable than its size would suggest. 
Without this feature, operating the truck in the tight confines of an open pit mine would have been nearly impossible. In October 1974, General Motors presented the Titan to the public at the American Mining Congress in Las Vegas. The truck created a sensation. GM even commissioned a television commercial featuring golf legend Jack Nicklaus standing in the loaded bed of the Titan, hitting golf balls while showcasing the machine's immense scale. The manufacturer predicted the 3319 would cost approximately $1.5 million in production, equivalent to over $6 million today. The corporation envisioned fleets of these giants transforming mining operations worldwide. In January 1975, the Titan began its working life at Kaiser Steel's Eagle Mountain Mine in the California desert. This massive open pit iron ore operation in Riverside County had been supplying Kaiser's Fontana steel mill since 1948. The mine shipped ore via the 51-mile Eagle Mountain Railroad to an interchange with Southern Pacific. It was the largest iron mine in the western United States and seemed like the perfect proving ground. However, the Titan's early years proved challenging. The prototype nature of the machine meant frequent downtime. Parts weren't standardized. Every breakdown required custom solutions and the nearest expertise was often thousands of miles away. Despite these difficulties, the truck kept moving material. Over four years at Eagle Mountain, it hauled approximately 3.5 million tons of earth and ore. In late 1978, Kaiser Steel transferred the Titan from the California desert to an entirely different environment, the Barmer Open Pit Coal Mine near Sparwood, British Columbia. This operation in the Kootenay region of the Rocky Mountains was one of the largest coal mines in North America. At Sparwood, the Titan joined impressive company. The mine operated 20-unit rig M200 haulers, each with a 200-ton capacity, along with four P&H 2800 electric shovels, the largest that manufacturer had ever built. But even among these giants, the Titan stood apart as something special. Ownership of the Sparwood mine changed several times over the following years. British Columbia Resources acquired it from Kaiser Steel in 1980. Then, in 1983, Westar Mining took over operations. At this point, something significant happened. Westar purchased the Titan outright from General Motors for just $200,000 plus a million dollars worth of spare parts. The purchase price seems astonishingly low for the world's largest truck. But there was a catch. General Motors hadn't been able to sell any additional 3319 units. The worldwide coal market had softened dramatically in the late 1970s. Mining operations were cutting costs, rebuilding existing equipment, and buying smaller proven trucks. The market GM envisioned never materialized, and the Titan remained a one-off prototype. Under Westar Mining's ownership, the Titan finally hit its stride. The maintenance team made modifications to strengthen the frame and upgrade various systems. They also added high sideboards to the dump body, allowing it to carry even more material. The results were remarkable. The Titan achieved an uptime rate of more than 70%, impressive for any haul truck and extraordinary for a prototype. More impressively, it regularly carried loads exceeding 350 tons. Some reports indicate the Titan routinely hauled 400 tons or more, though this extra weight did cause some frame cracking issues. The economics simply worked. With its enormous payload, the truck proved cheaper to operate per cubic yard moved than the smaller 200-ton haulers. When you can move nearly twice as much material in a single trip, the math works in your favor. The Titan also got a new paint job, changing from Terex Lime Green to Westar's blue and yellow livery. The Titan ran productively at Sparwood until 1991 when Westar Mining finally retired it from active service. After 17 years of operation, including four years at Eagle Mountain and 13 years in British Columbia, the world's largest truck had earned its rest. By 1993, the Titan's future was uncertain. New owners had formed the Elkview Mining Corporation and scrap metal prices made demolishing the truck attractive. A machine this size contained an enormous amount of valuable steel. But the people of Sparwood had other ideas 
The community had built its identity around coal mining and the Titan had become part of that heritage. Elkview Coal Corporation offered the truck as a gift to the Sparwood Chamber of Commerce. What followed was a remarkable community effort. Local volunteers launched fundraising campaigns, secured government grants, and gathered donations from residents and businesses. The truck was carefully disassembled, moved to a new location beside Highway 3, and painstakingly reassembled for public display. Today, the Terex Titan sits in Titan Park, restored to its original green livery, greeting visitors traveling through British Columbia's coal country. The engine has been removed, but the machine stands as a monument to an ambitious era of engineering. The Titan held its record as the world's highest capacity haul truck for 25 years until Caterpillar surpassed it in 1998 with the 360-ton payload 797. Even then, the Titan remained the largest three-axle haul truck ever built, a distinction it still holds today. Was it a success or a failure? GM never sold another one. The projected market never appeared. The Titan remained a prototype, a proof of concept that never reached production. But consider what that single truck accomplished. It worked productively for 17 years across two different mines. It moved millions of tons of material and proved that diesel-electric haul trucks of unprecedented size could operate reliably in demanding conditions. The lessons learned from the Titan influenced subsequent ultra-class haul trucks. The diesel-electric technology that seemed so advanced in 1974 became standard in the largest mining trucks built today. Modern giants from Caterpillar, Komatsu and Liebherr carry payloads that would have seemed impossible in the 1970s, but they all owe something to the pioneering work done on the 3319.